Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Unit 4 quiz review. Uh, today, we're going to talk about, of course, our Unit 4 quiz that comes right before Thanksgiving break um, and what to expect on it. So we'll get started with number one. Number one, identify each variable as either categorical or quantitative. So um, categorical variables are things that can be obviously broken into categories, different labels. Um, but quantitative things are more measurable things, things that you can count, measure, quantify, basically. So zip code, zip code is a numerical value, but it doesn't quantify anything. It doesn't measure anything. It's just kind of a numerical label for an area. So it's, again, it's more of that classification uh, type. So it is categorical. Height, height is measurable. Height is something you can count. You can measure height. So, and of course it's numerical, that's a quantitative thing. Hair color, a hair color is categorical, right? Um, that can be separated in categories like blonde, brunette, et cetera. Uh, gender, gender is also categorical. Weight, weight is quantitative uh, because of course you can measure weight. Distance is also quantitative. You can measure distance, right? Numerical time is quantitative. You can measure time. It's quanti It's a uh, quantitative value. And then phone number. Phone number is a numerical value, but again, it doesn't count anything. Doesn't measure anything. It's just a. It's just essentially a label for your phone, right? So that one is categorical. All right, number two. So number two. Um, is there an association between region and music? If so, explain. Um, the quick answer here is yes. You can tell because, of course, uh, the bars are, are segmented differently. So Northeast has a lot more pop or rock. West is a little bit more split 50-50 on like country and rock with like a little bit classical. And then South is a lot more country with a lot less pop or rock classical. And so basically everything I just said is what I should write pretty much, right? Just kind of stating the obvious, but in word form. So, um, so yes. Um, each region um, has different proportions. or different varieties of music. Um, example, Northeast has a lot more pop rock. Wow. South has more country. Yeah, something like that, basically. Uh, number three, what does DOFS stand for? So that's D for direction. O for outlier or unusual features. Uh, F for form and S for string. So remember, this is about um, describing a scatter plot. So when you describe a scatter plot, if you ever see a scatter plot and you have to describe it, you're going to talk about those four things. So number four, um, the explanatory variable. I know the explanatory variable is um, the the variable that predicts the response variable. But let me give me one second. I want to pull up um, the exact wording for this answer. So just give me a moment. 
Um, because I, I want to, I think that's basically what it is. I think it's just the variable that predicts the response. But like I said, let me preview it and find out for sure. Yeah. So it helps predict or explain. The response variable. It is the input um, independent variable. All right. Whereas, of course, the response variable um, is the outcome. And it's a variable that is being predicted. It's the outcome variable. And it is also known as, um, like we said, the output slash dependence variable. There we go. All right, number six. What three things do you need to make a scatter plot? So you need to, uh, let me make sure I get them in order here. I like to put them in order. Um, identify the variables and label the axis. That's step number one. Uh, step number two, scale the axis. This is straight out of the notes as well. So if you go back to your scatter plots and notes, you'll you'll see this. Um, oh, plural, so it's an E. Uh, and then lastly, is kind of plot the points, right? Plot the data values, not plot, plot data values. All right. All right, so we have these six statements. We saw this as well in the notes. So hopefully if you just kind of took your notes out, you could figure all this stuff out. But um, if R is equal to negative one or positive one, it is a perfect fit. Um, if it is close to negative one or positive one, it is a good fit. If it is equal to zero, it is uh, not linear. Let me make sure I have the right wording on that. Yeah, so I'll just write not linear. Um, if R is close to zero, it is not a good fit. If it is less than zero, then of course it is negative. Um, relationship. And if it is greater than zero, it is a positive relationship. So positive correlation, negative correlation, basically. Let's try to really put that word in there. Um, number eight. Um, identify statements about correlation as true or false. So first one, correlation can never be equal to zero. That is false. It can be equal to zero. It falls within the negative one, the positive one region. So of course that's um, can be true. Um, correlation makes no distinction between explanatory 
and response variables. We talked about this just this week. That is true. Um, you could switch the explanatory and response variables around, and it doesn't change the correlation. That is true. A negative correlation is always weaker than a positive correlation. That is false. They could be equally strong. You can have a perfect negative correlation. You can have a perfect positive correlation and anything in between. Correlation can be greater than one. That is false as well. It can only go between negative one and positive one. So you can't have that. Correlation R has no units of measure. That is true. Correlation does not use units. And R does not change when we change units. This is also true. Again, we saw that this week. If you change the units from feet to inches or inches to feet, um, the correlation is no different. It does not change at all. All right. So a correlation of negative 0 0.65 is stronger, equal, or weaker than a correlation of 0 0.6. Well, this is closer to negative one than that is to positive one. So that means this is stronger. So again, closer to negative one is perfect. Closer to positive one is perfect. But this one's closer to negative one, the perfect not, uh, negative value. Then this one is to positive one, which is the perfect positive value. So that's what makes that one stronger, right? 6.5 essentially is higher than 0. 0.6. So correlation can range from negative one to positive one, of course. And that's it. That is it. That's the whole study guide. So if you guys have any other questions, do let me know. Other than that, I just hope, you know, wish you the best of luck. I don't think it should be too difficult, but it is a lot of memorization. So it is a lot of studying. It's really, as you can see, there's not really much math on this test at all. It's mostly just sort of know your stuff, right? So uh, be very mindful and aware of that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys uh, after the quiz. Bye for now.